Thou shalt not let thy senses make a playground of thy mind. Thou shalt not separate thy being from being and the rest, but merge the ocean in the drop, the drop within the ocean. Please continue watching to find out more. Здравствуйте, уважаемые зрители. Means hello, dear viewers in Russian. My name is Father. The peaceful people of Yamalo Nenets Autonomous Okrug are ever thankful for the blessing of kind friends such as you. The 19th century Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was born into a noble family in Ukraine. As a child, young Helena displayed a gift for clairvoyance, as well as an interest in metaphysical phenomena. Years later, she traveled throughout Europe, the Middle East and India, studying with various teachers and Sufi saints. Following the guidance of an Indian yogi named Mahatma Maurya, Madame Blavatsky co-founded the Theosophical Society. Theosophy, meaning divine wisdom, refers to knowledge that comes through spiritual experience rather than intellectual understanding alone. The Theosophical Society is dedicated to uplifting humanity through a realization of the oneness of life and the wisdom underlying all religions. Madame Blavatsky wrote several important books on Theosophy, including Isis Unveiled, The Secret Doctrine, The Key to Theosophy, and The Voice of the Silence. The Voice of the Silence contains excerpts from a sacred Tibetan Buddhist text called The Book of the Golden Precepts that Madame Blavatsky discovered while in India and translated herself. In the book's preface, she emphasized the importance of sincere truth-seeking as well as striving for selfless spiritual practice in accordance with the Buddha's teachings. Today on Words of Wisdom, we invite you to listen to excerpts of the seven portals from Madame Blavatsky's The Voice of the Silence. The seven portals. Upadayaya, or Guru, the choice is made, I thirst for wisdom. Now have thou opened the veil before the secret path and taught the great yana or vehicle. Thy servant here is ready for thy guidance. It is well, Sravaka, or student. Prepare thyself, for thou will have to travel on alone. The teacher can but point the way. The path is one for all. The means to reach the goal must vary with the pilgrims. Which will thou choose, O thou of dauntless heart? The samtam, or meditation of eye doctrine, fourfold dhyana, or meditation practice, or thread thy way through paramitas, the six noble gates of virtue leading to body, and to prajna's seventh step of wisdom the rugged path of fourfold dhyana, or meditation practice, winds on uphill. Three times great is he who climbs the lofty top. The Paramita heights are crossed by a still steeper path. Thou hast to fight thy way through portals seven, seven strongholds held by cruel crafty powers, passions incarnate. Be of good cheer, disciple, bear in mind the golden rule. Once thou hast passed the gate, Srotapati, he who the stream hath entered, once thy foot hath pressed the bed of the Nirvanic stream, in this or any future life, 
thou hast but seven other birds before thee, O thou of adamantine will. Look on, what seest thou before thine eye, O aspirant to godlike wisdom? The cloak of darkness is upon the deep of matter. Within its fold I struggle. Beneath my gaze it deepens. Lord, it is dispelled beneath the waving of thy hand. A shadow moves, creeping like the stretching serpent coils. It grows, swells out and disappears in darkness. It is the shadow of thyself outside the path, cast on the darkness of thy sins. Yes, Lord, I see the path, its foot in a mire, its summits lost in glorious light nirvanic, and now I see the ever-narrowing portals on the hard and thorny way to jhana, or wisdom. Thou seest well, Lanu, these portals lead the aspirant across the waters onto the other shore. Each portal hath a golden key that opens its gate, and these keys are 1. Dana, the key of charity and love immortal. 2. Sheila, the key of harmony in word and act, the key that counterbalances the cause and the effect and leaves no further room for karmic action. 3. Kshanti, mercy sweet that nothing can ruffle. 4. Virag, indifference to pleasure and to pain, illusion conquered, truth alone perceived. 5. Virya, the dauntless energy that fights its way to the supernal truth, out of the mire of lies terrestrial. 6. Dayana, whose golden gate once opened, leads the Naljor, or saint, towards the realm of Sat, or true reality eternal, and its ceaseless contemplation. 7. Prajna, the key to which makes of a man a god, creating him a bodhisattva, son of the Dayanis. Such to the portals are the golden keys. Before thou can approach the last, O viva of thy freedom, thou hast to master these paramitas of perfection, the virtues transcendental six and ten in number, along the weary path. For, O disciple, before thou were made fit to meet thy teacher, face to face, thy master, light to light, what were thou told? Before thou can approach the foremost gate, thou hast to learn to part thy body from thy mind, to dissipate the shadow and to live in the eternal. For this thou hast to live and breathe in all, as all that thou perceive breathe in thee. To feel thyself abiding in all things, all things in self. Thou shalt not let thy senses make a playground of thy mind. Thou shalt not separate thy being from being and the rest, but merge the ocean in the drop, the drop within the ocean. So shalt thou be in full accord with all that lives. Be love to men as though they were thy brother pupils, disciples of one teacher the sons of one sweet mother. Of teachers there are many. The master's soul is one, Alaya, the universal soul. Live in that master as its ray in thee. Live in thy fellows as they live in it. Before thou stand on the threshold of the path, before thou cross the foremost gate, thou hast to merge the two into the one and sacrifice the personal to self-impersonal, and thus destroy the antakarana, or the path between the two. Thou hast to be prepared to answer Dharma, the stern law, whose voice will ask thee at thy first, at thy initial step. Hast thou complied with all the rules, O thou of lofty hopes? 
Hast thou attuned thy heart and mind to the great mind and heart of all mankind? For as the sacred river's roaring voice, whereby all nature sounds are echoed back, so must the heart of him who in the stream would enter thrill in response to every sign and thoughts of all that lives and breathes. Disciples may be likened to the strings of the soul echoing vena or musical instrument, humankind unto its sounding board, the hand that sweeps it to the tuneful breath of the great world soul. The string that fails to answer beneath the master's touch in dulcet harmony with all the others breaks and is cast away. So the collective minds of Elanu Stravakas or disciples have to be attuned to the Upadayaya or Guru's mind, one with the Oversoul or Breakaway. Hast thou attuned thy being to humanity's great pain? O candidate for light, thou hast, thou may enter, yet before thou set foot upon the dreary path of sorrow. It is well thou should first learn the pitfalls on thy way. Delightful viewers, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today on Words of Wisdom. 